Welcome to the Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere, and there's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Also below this video, you can get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy, and this is of particular note if you drive an electric vehicle. Speaking of Patreons, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So, a massive shout of thanks and appreciation to Michael Kahn, Sarah Griffiths, Rob H, Ben White, Maximum Gravy, Austin Witsit, John Kays, Tommy Swagnets, Patrick Gunnels, Banter, Will Brax, Mel B. Styles, Troy Shuker, Bo's Nail, uh, Maris, Harry Blade, Mobile Max 777, Neo the One, Lost Cat FE, Rob W, Open Minded, Reese Pound, Del West Watson, Mike, Muted, Dick Earth Skeptic, Maria Neelands, Unbelievable Productions, Blue Ridge Ranger, The Real Gabster, Liam Nedrick Jr., Abraham Mohammed, Adrian Quintana, Skeptic936, Life is Short, the Flat Earth Channel.com, and David Wayne Foster. So another massive thank you to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now I will hand over to whoever is in Discord and Google so you can enjoy their dulcet tones while I set up for today's live show. Outstanding. I love that trick question. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I had to fight with the kids. Um, the uh, the um, I guess one of the uh, proponents of the uh, dielectric acceleration uh, put it to uh, someone in chat the other day. I was just watching them go by. He said that the orientation we experience, uh, there's two claims about it, that it's dictated by the incoherent dielectric acceleration or are we claiming that it's dictated by the container? Dictated by the container. The container is a prerequisite for these effects to begin in the first place. So it's an antecedent. But that doesn't mean that it's the... I mean, you could say that without the container, there couldn't be any of these effects. But ascribing cause to the container itself, when it's an antecedent consequent relationship, is a bit silly. You can, I suppose, no. the cause is the container. I mean, the cause of pressure is the container in the first instance. Well, that's that's not the trick. Uh, the, the trick's in the word orientation. Because what is orientation? That's relative to you, isn't it, if you're describing it? Right, but does gas experience anything we can uh, quantify as orientation, or does it experience all vectors? All vectors. This is our point, really. This is where we end this argument. Right, but he, the, the guy was trying to place it in uh, the, everything within the idea of orientation, you know? So that, so that was the trick that he was doing. Well, keep it nice and relative. Oh, yeah, great trick. Got to get up early in the morning to fool us. Well, I was I was laughing about it. I thought it was pretty funny. Good morning. I'm up early in the morning. He's not trying to convince you. You know, he's selling this to himself when he's selling it to you. Correct. Oh yeah, he had to be like. I mean, I wasn't even the one talking to him. I was just watching it, you know, the conversation as it played out. And, you know, I was just laughing about it. Like, he wouldn't even accept that, because the other guy was saying, gas doesn't have an orientation. That's what he just kept saying, you know, and like, the, he just would not accept that. You know, <laughs> he's like, then, then Bob has an explanation for the orientation then, and you don't. That was his, his conclusion. <laughs> Yeah, they've conjured, they've conjured an orientation. That's what's happened. And the claim that there's this orientation needs justification by way of showing it's occurring in nature. And they've picked on gases. You're like, that's useless. 
because it's just going to do the same thing every single time. It's just going to expand to fill whatever volume it's got every single time in all vectors every single time. So you want to claim a bias. There isn't one. What do you want us to do? Oh, well, we can show it. We can induce it temporarily till it disperses to fill the little volume that it's got to fill. Well, that's not very good. You know, this, this is crap. <laughs> it's just crap. <laughs> but there we go. Well, some people have a hard time with it because if you listen to the, the show you had the other day with Harp, they just weren't understanding all vectors. That's the way it sounded to me. They had it in the... Well, I've noticed when people start using big words, usually they're they're uh, either trying to blow smoke up your hind end or they're trying to hide something. Like they'll say it's a light is a perturbation. Well, a perturbation is a disturbance of a medium. You know? So, like, it's begging the question. I thought prohibition was a banning of alcohol. <laughs> Well, it's just, it's silly word games, you know what I mean? Like, they're they're trying to get their uh, presupposition in without having to prove it. You know, just take it as fact because I've used this word. Do you guys they're believe that? They're not understanding. Go ahead. Do you guys believe that gases have electrons? Oh no, not sink cleanser. Oh boy. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Why are you asking? What's it prove? Well, if you believe that they have electrons, then they would have a charge. And I would say charge is energy, which would give you a vector, which would be a force. And in the case of gas, that would be which vector? Well, it'd be all directions, but it would still be a force. So no specific vector the then. Charge. So who cares? In the case of the argument, who cares? Well, if you're Sound saying check. why is why are things moving or what's the vector of these things, it would be caused all vectors. By no, we're character. not asking that question when we assign, and you have just done also all vectors. What vectors it got? No, we're not asking that. Someone's asking it though, aren't they? Because they're trying to find a down in that all vectors. Yeah, that's the end of the conversation. You know, when you're well, like, well, which vector is it going to be going in? Yeah, we all know why you're asking that question when it's already been answered. The, does the sun affect the charge of the gas molecules? Well, all vectors again. This, this charge that you're going to be utilising is going to be used as a justification for incoherent dielectric acceleration causing gas go down, go boom, boom. That's why you're arguing for the charge. So, when I say, who cares, all vectors. So, is this, is this electrical inference going to be used to ascribe down, go boom, boom at some stage? I'm pretty sure it is. Can I get a sound check? Yep. I hear you. All right. Does this vector have bias? I think the argument is bias, not vectors, because we know it goes in all vectors. So they have to somehow say it can go in all vectors, but I'm going to prove bias. Well, then prove your bias. You can't. Duh. That's what I'm saying. They can. I think you could make an argument for bias, I think. So oh, gas, really? A gas has bias. <laughs> I would say that since the sun is above us, it would charge the gases below it or below the sun. And it goes in all vectors after it does that. Correct. Well, where's the direction of the sun's light coming from? From it goes in all vectors after it gets that. Below. Light is not gas. It's the temperature that affects it, right? The heat that the sun gives off. And heat is energy, and it's manifested yeah. by what you think, I guess, would be electrons after, or whatever charges after, the gas molecules. And after Still all that, vectors. oh gosh, and after all that and 10 more renditions of it, it goes in all vectors, right? Yes. 
Not you, Neil. Goes in all vectors, but you could argue that there may be. I don't care. I'm saying yes. Oh, forget it. All directors with a downward bias included, <laughs> as a caveat. There is no downward bias. Neil, Get when through I'm, your head. Neil, when I'm directing a question to someone else, that means I'm waiting for that person to answer. Relax, Kent, relax. No, you don't understand. This is the much needed pressure that a question puts on people. Go ahead, Kent. No, don't lash out, just learn. Not lashing out, and I don't need to learn. I'll okay. Well, obviously, too. obviously you don't need to learn because you're talking when someone else should be talking. Tent. Really? Come on. Uh, no, Neil, really? Uh, the reason for a question is to apply pressure for an answer from the person you're talking to, not someone else, to break that did pressure? Did you direct it? Did you say sin oh, cleanser? Forget it again. Why don't you just learn? Did you say sin cleanser? You asked the question. I'm talking to him. It was obvious I'm talking to him. And so was I, Tent. And I asked him a question, and you answered. What was the question? Yeah, I don't think we heard your question on our side. Maybe ask the question again, Tenth. <sighs> all vectors, no matter how many renditions you put it, it's going to go in all vectors. It doesn't have a bias, correct? I would say it goes in all vectors yes. with, um, with uh, consistency of these vectors mainly, um, how would I say it? Keep, yeah, keep, keep looking Giving for words you a that aren't there. Bias. Mostly so down, rendition. mostly down. That's what he's it saying. It goes in all directions, but there is somewhat of a bias downwards. What about the ones that go oh, up? Keep... Well, that would be the exception to the rule. Oh, really? So all directions except your inference of a bias down, that's not the exception to the rule, which is all vectors. It's the other way around. When they're going away from the down only, when they're going in all vectors, that's the exception to the rule. No. Well, that, I mean, I'll just summarize it before I guess you guys start, but if the sun does have light and the light does have a charge and the light is charging the gas particles, then I would call that pressure that's coming from above down to the gases below. And yeah, I think that it's would just be being the... heated up. So you're saying they're increasing how yeah, quickly? Yeah, heat is energy. They, so, so they're just increasing the velocity they go in whatever vector they're going in. Sod all to do with down and everything to do with them giving more energy and therefore increasing their velocity. Well, if what's charging these gas particles is the sun and the sun is above us, I heard that. that. Yeah, that heard. Vector yeah, that's the same thing. I heard that. I heard. I heard. <laughs> Did you want to respond to what I said? Because you're inferring, what can you put it, how can you put it, mm, I don't know, gas go down, go boom, boom, like you've just inferred. And then you've justified it by the electric force that the sun's giving to the gas to make it go down, go boom, boom. Yeah, I know what you're doing. I know what your claim is. I've refuted it. All vectors, if it gets a bit more energy, it will increase its velocity in whatever vector it's travelling in. And that's all vectors, not down, go boom, boom. Not just down, not a bias down. All vectors. So this justification for the down go boom boom, we're not letting you have the assumption of down go boom boom. Definitely not going to let you tell me that the exception to down go boom boom, your inference, your assumption, your incorrect nonsense, is actually when it's not doing that, that's the exception. N no, it isn't. Gas always expands in all directions, in all vectors, without exception. That's what gas does. You want to show me gas not expanding to fill a volume? Because otherwise, that is the rule, not down, go, boom, boom, the rule. And when it fills a volume, that's the exception. That's bollocks. Not down, go, boom, boom. All vectors. Your nonsense that you've listened to in terms of the electrical justification for your down, go, boom, boom, which is wrong, assumption, isn't going to fly. Who cares about the sun? Who cares about the electricity it's inducing when it's moving in all directions? And this isn't going to justify down, go, boom, boom. I don't get it. 
You're not responding to what I've said. You've just repeated your claim. You've chanted at me. Thank you, Sinclenza, for repeating the claim. Now, would you like to address what I have stated to you? Well, I don't know much how much time you have to do the little back and forth. So. Let me get it straight. Yeah, let me get it straight. You explain that you're going to be begging the question of Gasco down, go boom, boom. You're a bit vague and wishy-washy about, mm, how can I phrase Gasco down, go boom, boom? Yeah, however you phrased that assumption of down. I've then responded to the fact you've already conceded all vectors. And your response to me is, I don't know if I've got enough time. You think that's a rebuttal, St. <laughs> Lenza? No, it's just me being polite. So you're just going to give more renditions after you say gas goes in all vectors and we're going to end up at the same spot. Well, well, what I asked initially was, I'll ask you, Tense Man, do you think gases have electrons? And yeah, and I said, who cares? Yes. Did you listen when I said, who cares? Unless it's justifying gas go down, go boom, boom. That wasn't clarified when I said it. But then later, when there was a long stony silence from me, you tentatively admitted that you're trying to justify gas go down, go boom, boom, which it doesn't do. Now, I've refuted it three times and you've chanted the same crap at me in response three times so what what do you want me to do you chanting muppet you're not responding to me you're not parroting back verbatim my response your response is just to repeat something that i've already refuted do you want to do the ref do you want to repeat it four more times is that what this is going to be saint cleanser no i agree gas can go down go boom boom sorry they're moving in all vectors so you agree when i didn't state that what are you, Bob the Science Guy? Do you need me to have said gas go down, go boom, boom, so you can justify your assumption of gas go down, go boom, boom, by claiming I've claimed it? I didn't claim that. Why are you saying I agree with you when I did not say that? I've specifically said all vectors, all directions. Well, all would include down. Yeah. Not as a <laughs> bias, just inclusive of all vectors. You need it to be a mostly down, don't you? For, and then you're going to go on to justify the mostly down with electricity. I, I understand your claim. I'm repeating what you're claiming back to you in every instance. You're not in any way, shape or form repeating back my refutation of what you've said. You're not doing that. I'll say this. I'll say that if there is any bias, it's... So you're going to repeat the claim again. Done. So if there's a bias, so begging the question in the first fucking breath. So you are not going to repeat my rebuttal back. You're just going to chant the claim for a fourth time, starting with you begging the question of if there's a bias. Oh, my God. Do you want to try again for a fifth time? Or perhaps understand, acknowledge, maybe repeat back my rebuttal. That's the second attempt. Are you going to chant again if gas goes down, go boom, boom at me? Or maybe listen to the response and repeat it back so I know you've understood it. You haven't. You're in that frame your of response. mind that says, just chant it a sixth time. That's what you're going to do, isn't it? No, Simplenta? no, no. I understood your argument. Your argument what is, is my it argument? Goes in all vectors. It goes in all vectors with no bias down. So your right? justification for the bias down by asking us about the electricity suns inducing is irrelevant then. It's irrelevant, Sinclenza. Oh. Do you get it? You asking us about the electricity induction from the sun is entirely irrelevant, then. Not if gas... Uh, Goes down! It's downwards. <laughs> yeah, you fucking try. I'm going to kick you out. You circle-jerking fucking Muppet. If it goes down, what if you beg the question when it's all vectors and you've just refuted that and repeated it back? If you ignore that completely, you mean? You're really pissing me off, Sinclenza. Do you want to chant it for oh, a seventh sorry, time, you fucking fundy muppet? That's seven ti six times so far. Do you want to just chant again that mostly down if it goes down, if there's a bias down? Because we've had it six times. Can anyone else understand my frustration? He said, I've understood your yeah, reputation. This kind of reminds me of Harp, the it, Harp I, conversation. Yeah, same bloody thing. Just somebody chanting. My, yeah, my response didn't just consist down. of gas moves in all directions. I described how the sun inducing this effect that you're describing would affect all vectors equally. If it increases energy, it would travel in the same direction it's already travelling at a higher rate. That that was my rebuttal, Sinclair. So not just all directions. Yeah. Now, I'm having to paraphrase not only your fucking argument, but my rebuttal to your argument that you are incapable of responding to. All you've done is chant the same thing six times so far. Now, can I get a concise, succinct summary of my rebuttal that I've had to paraphrase myself for you. 
Rather than a seventh repetition of the same claim that I do understand. Believe me, I understand it. Don't beg the question say, if gas go down, go boom, boom. Don't do that either. Well, we agree. Okay, what do you want me to paraphrase where we're at or move forward? Oh, maybe concede that if gas moves in all directions, it's not got to buy us down? The claim that you're trying to justify when you ask me about the induced effect, that's the fourth time I've asked you. You just have to concede. It hasn't got a bias downwards. Well, there are other forces at play apart from just... Um, so that's not a concession. That's not a concession. Forces. So <laughs> there's other forces other than your assumption of down. Yep. So he's going to do it for a seventh time. That's what he's just done, ladies and gentlemen. He has just begged the question for a seventh time. There are other forces other than the downward one you're assuming and haven't conceded. So that's seven. W what number are we going to get to with you, Sinclair? Is ten before we start the live show? You still haven't conceded. All vectors isn't biased down. Increasing energy from the sun doesn't make it go down either. You're not conceding. Just going to tell me there's other no, forces other than the downward one you're assuming, right? Tell me there's other forces other than the downward one you're assuming. Go on, do it for an eighth time. No, Nathan, I agreed with you that gases go in all directions. So not a bias down, then? Unless there's a force acting upon it. Uh, sorry. Is there a bias downwards for gas? There is, a, there is a, a conductive energy flow from the sun giving us a bias. And as Unless you failed completely to repeat my refutation of that because you're a wanker, I'm going to now have to paraphrase my own rebuttal again. So if it was doing that, it would increase the velocity in the bias upwards if the direction of travel happened to be upwards at that point then. You haven't repeated it back to me, you stupid wanker. That's why I'm pissed with you. Yeah, you just said, oh, yeah, yeah, all vectors. And then you go on to repeat this crap again. Yeah, I heard you the first six times. And I pointed out that that effect that you're now describing to justify, oh, well, if there's a force making it go down, go boom, boom. That I'm going to assume when I say there's other forces making it go down, go boom, boom. Yeah, we went through this, didn't we, though, Harp? Uh, sink cleanser, my bad. You're both the same chanting fun of it, let's face it. <laughs> well, I don't think you addressed my claim, Nathan. Oh, do you not? Do you think me paraphrasing it back on multiple occasions and then ref refuting it by pointing out that the description of sun-inducing energy in a vector that was up wouldn't be justification for a bias down. That's not refuting it. You don't think I've understood. Maybe it is time for a ninth repetition. Because you have basically got the you don't understand rebuttal. Is this really your best crack of the whip, Sinclenser? You don't understand well, my claim. Well, would you agree that the sun... Oh, maybe it's going to be a ninth ref repetition. I can't believe my ears. <laughs> chant, chant and laugh for me while you piss me off royally. I think this is funny, you stupid twat. I'm not finding this amusing, Sin Cleanser. Nine repetitions of the same thing you have yet to paraphrase back to me, only to go on to repeat it after saying, well, I just don't think you understand the thing you've refuted nine times. You wanker. Yeah, I do fucking understand you. You're not speaking in Spanish. I understand what you have said. I've paraphrased it back to you multiple times. Well, no, I think we agree. Yeah. So guess not got by us down then. Go on, chant it for a tenth time, you fucking fundy bitch. Now you've all got to concede. All directions, all vectors. That's not a bias down. Just say it. Including the one with the bias down. Sorry, including the one that you're going to assume has got a bias down, you chanting fundy muppet. So no concession, just a complete tenth repetition of is a begging the question fallacy that there's a bias down. How much of the bias down does the, the one go up suffer? Maybe repeat, because I haven't listened and haven't understood, that the one going up is the exception to the rule, not the demolition of the argument. So how much bias down does a molecule of gas going up have? We'd have to consider all the forces. Maybe you don't understand what I've just said to you 10 seconds ago. Do you want me to repeat it, Sinclenser? How much bias down does a gas molecule going up have precisely? Pray tell. Fucking idiot. Sinclenser, do you want to chuckle for me again, you complete twat? Did you hear the question? Because you seem to have a stony silence rather than you repeating it back to buy a bit of time then answering it. 
You're not even repeating it back. How much downward bias does a molecule of gas that is travelling in an upward vector have? Stupid shit. You dumb fuck. You complete retard. You nonce. You idiot. Hello? Dick brain? Three repetitions of the same question. How much downward bias does a particle of gas that is moving up have, Synclenza? We'd have to consider all the variables, and you have yeah, uh, yeah, I've considered them all. The all vectors. The all vectors have been considered. Now I'm asking you about one that is travelling in an upward direction. How much bias down does it have? That's four. You stupid shit. You retard. You dumb fuck chanting muppet. How much bias down does a gas particle moving up have, Synclenza? Fifth time. Just answer the question. I would say some measurable bias. Some measurable bias down when it's travelling up. You complete idiot. No bias down because it's not moving down, you stupid shit. If it's going up, there's going to be some... It's going up, so not down then. So when you talk about this bias down, this doesn't have any of that then. It's the same gas as all the rest of it, but this one's just, what, the exception to the rule? Given that the rule is all vectors, not down. Nathan, can I ask you? Maybe it's time for a question of me! How much bias down does a gas particle moving up have, Synclenza? A measurable amount. None! You stupid retard! You think something going up's got a measurable amount of down? Yes, you could... No! Wow. You stupid dick! <laughs> it's, it's accelerating downward. Well, yeah, well it's, it's accelerating a downward velocity in an upward vector, is it, you stupid shit? What do you think resistance... Well, ask me something. I called you a stupid shit. Because when asked how much downward bias does something going up have, you say some, making you fundamentally retarded. You want to laugh again? You want to chuckle at me, you smug twat? Nathan, I agree to disagree. So, agree to disagree that something that's going up's actually got some downward bias to it. It's not agree to disagree situation. It's spastic on the line situation that thinks that something going up can be measured and how much down it's got. Stupid dick. That's just you being thick. It's not agree to disagree. It's you being thick. Hello, you stupid shit. I'm not agreeing to disagree with you. I'm slapping my nuts around your dumb face. With your, it's got a bit of down when it's going up. No, it hasn't, you complete retard. Third time I've called you a retard. Justifiably so, because of your stupid, nonsensical assertion that something going up's got a downward bias. You complete idiot. No, it hasn't. You're just stupid. Do you hear me? You are just stupid, Synclenser. Part of this aren't you getting... I'm not getting I the say, part. Go ahead. I say Rick. we. I say we leave this at this for now and. Uh, oh, thank you, righteous. I can manage my own show. I'm calling you I... stupid, Synclenza, because you're saying something that's moving up's got a downward bias. That's fundamentally stupid. Now I'm not going to start a live show. I'm not going to do anything until you accept this fact. Not agree to disagree on your abject stupidity. Concede your stupidity, you dumb shit. Right now. So it going up has no downward bias, you stupid shit. Concede right now. You didn't address my... Uh... Oh, I didn't address you, didn't I? Yeah, I absolutely did on ten separate occasions, Synclenser. You have declared, because you're stupid, that something moving up has actually got a certain amount of down to it. That's wrong. You're yeah. going to concede that. Well, resistance is the answer. Sorry, we're going to talk about something else. New topic, because you cannot bear to concede how stupid you are. You are Confess. stupid. Things moving Confess. up don't have down. Arwin's going to ruin this point for me as well. Righteous has sensed the pressure and wants to relieve it also. Nobody's releasing this pressure from you, Sinclair, you dumb shit. Other than you, when you concede that something moving up has nothing to measure going down. You stupid shit. I accept that you think that, Nathan. It's not that I think it, it's a irrefutable fact.
Well, your upward vector in that example... Isn't down. It has no down. It's up. It's an upward vector. You've claimed that that has a certain amount of down because you're a dumb shit. Now, you are going to concede your stupidity here. That's what's going to happen, Sinclenta. You stupid moron. I got to make some coffee, Nathan. Run, you (laughs) coward bitch. No, I don't want to miss your show. Uh, uh, This is the show. Me calling you a coward bitch because you would rather run away to make coffee. Like, exactly like Harp ran away for a fag. Right, Sinclenza? You're going to scuttle away at the point that your stupidity has been highlighted on multiple occasions and you just simply won't concede. Rather than concede that something moving up has no measurable down bias to measure, you're going to go for a cup of coffee instead, you abject coward. Well, you didn't want to address the resistance claim. Sorry, it's not a question of addressing resistance when you have specifically said that something moving up has a certain amount of down to it. That's wrong. We're not moving on. We're not talking about resistance. That's your pathetic attempt to weasel away from your abject stupidity. No, we're not going to talk about something that isn't your concession in regards to things moving up having a downward bias. That's wrong. And you're damn well going to concede it, you pathetic twat. Shut up, Neil. What is your... You had this nagged at you by 10th. I'm not going to do it. Shut up. Sink cleanser. Dumb shit of the year. 2021. You have said things moving up are actually moving down. That's fundamentally incorrect. It's a violation of the law of non-contradiction. And it is your stupidity that you will be conceding. Has he run away for a coffee? Has he legged it? Total coward. Just like Harp. I wasn't here to hear you praying our stupid words. I'd run away like a coward. Gone for a smoke. Gone for a coffee. Total coward. live i'm your host nathan oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a nathan oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the flat earth debate if you would like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live and there's also a paypal patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video Also below this video, you can get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy. And this is of particular note if you drive an electric vehicle. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching. Then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. Now we are joined by 10th man, Neil Arwin. Refracted Curvature, the Adam Meekin, and a whole bunch of people in Discord. So welcome one and all. Good morning. Hello, good morning. hello. Good afternoon. Hey, good morning. Good What's up? Guy. Yeah, Nathan's a little late because he was grilling somebody with a downward no, bias. No, no, no. It's not this guy. Because this guy's also going down. I, I, I said <laughs> downward bias. What? It's also relative. <laughs> relative to you when you make, when things move left there is a measurable amount of right in them just so you guys know <laughs> yeah things are still accelerating down even if they're moving up right no, that's nonsense 
just the guy who claimed it went for a coffee at the point of concession, claimed I wasn't listening to his new introduction of new arguments in regards to resistance. That hadn't been aired, hadn't been addressed, certainly hadn't been conceded. Anyway, moving on to the actual live show. Any evidence for physical geometric sphere at horizon, formerly known as the curve of the Earth? They never claim the geometric horizon. They do. It's Except in the Except when boats maps. go over the curve, then yeah, it is that's, one. That's, yeah, that's the geometric horizon. It's on screen right now. This point that is claimed to have obscured the boat from view when it goes over the hump, that would be your geometric horizon in Muppet Vision. Perspective exclusive, of course. Yeah. The boat wouldn't be that size at that scale, but that's ignored in Muppet Vision Earth Curve maths, where the geometric physical sphere edge horizon is depicted on screen as you see it now, as a physical obstruction if you're looking at the side of your own head and you ignore perspective. Yeah, and on top of that, we also get the straw man claim that on a flat earth, things don't disappear. You could just see them forever because they're in a straight line of sight and not obscured by the curve, which is completely ridiculous. But they still bring it up, though. It's actually a useful picture for the next question I'm going to ask. Any evidence you can have a curved adjacent whilst acquiring an elevation angle? Yeah, uh, I don't think a sextant would work on a surface like that, would it? No, it would not. And if you claim that you are going to acquire a chord line, a la this line, if you wanted to call it that, a chord line, then you'd need an R value. And they That's... don't have that it's debunked by the black well, swan. It, it's, this one's a bit interesting, Evan, because with all the others, we say you're going to need R for that. But I think in this one, you're going to have to say to him, you cannot have an R for that. Oh, it's why it's my favourite. So mm. I'll just break down what Adam said. Beautiful point, by the way. Thank you, Adam. So... In most, if not all instances, I typically said 99.9% .9 of cases they will assume the Earth is a sphere before they do anything else. If the Earth's a sphere, kind of like in the pre-show. Well, if there is a downward bias, you just assume the thing you're trying to prove. Well, in this instance, you cannot have a curved adjacent when acquiring an elevation angle. Therefore, you're going to need a flat Earth for that angle. So before they go on to assume R and move that angle measured at the surface to the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth, as they normally do, they first have to measure the angle. And they're going to need two straight lines for that. Or to put it another way, they can't beg the question of a sphere first. They have to assume it's flat to measure the angle. And then they assume it's a sphere. So they're going to need a flat plane for that angle. Correct, Adam? Well, that destroys the uh, celestial sphere. Any claim of angular uh, relationships in the sky then for them doesn't it for them it does yeah because none of them work on a spherical surface because they haven't got a straight line to measure the angle that they'll be claiming when they move it through a degree measurement that comes from the center of a presupposed spherical earth that has nothing to do with the actual alignment of what you're measuring on the surface and what you're measuring is an angle and that's two straight lines flat earth required you're gonna need a flat plane for that uh, Nathan, even if they go with their presupposed center of the Earth and presupposed sun coming in parallel light, when they go to put it on the Mercator map, uh, guess what's going to happen? Teardrop circle of equal altitudes. It doesn't even work with their big in the question, as Rob Durham showed. Indeed. In Rob Durham's video, he shows that you take a claim to be projection of a sphere Earth onto a flat cylindrical map that's then laid out flat. Now, that leaves you with extra bits of surface on that flat square map or flat rectangular map called the Mercator projection in this instance. Now, when you do your circles of equal altitude and plot them with a compass onto the map to draw where you are and figure it out with celestial navigation, you're just drawing a circle. That's how it works. Now, when you transpose those circles back onto a spherical surface, you don't have circles anymore. They become teardrops. So it doesn't work. The reverse of the claim to be engineering from a sphere doesn't work when you put it back on, and it must work if we're on a sphere. We're just not. Not to mention the fact that they couldn't acquire any of those angles to measure in the first instance. They wouldn't be able to acquire the GP position because it wouldn't be parallel to their position. Or a straight line from the surface if they're on the surface. So they always also use doesn't... that type of map then. They always use that type of map for that process. That was kind of the remaining question for me. Like, they do they always the use that map for, for the process? They need a map Very with longitude. Line. They need a map with longitude, latitude lines. What kind of map do you think they have to use? Rectangular. 
Yeah, and it's usually the Mercator map. All right. So they actually use that it works, but then when you fall it into a bowl, yeah, then it doesn't work. That's that's pretty astounding. On screen now for the audience. So you can see that this this red line actually is a demonstration of how far off, because you can see just on screen it comes to a point. This is not a circle. This is a teardrop shape, and it gets more and more exaggerated as you go further north or south from the equator. The only place, in fact, you will get a perfect circle is at the equator. But none of these circles match back onto the sphere, as they absolutely must if we're on a sphere. And it also oh, doesn't but... match on the AE map either. No. Well, th that doesn't surprise me, though, because of the way that that's projected. So you wouldn't expect it to work in that way. The azimuthal equidistant projection is but... not designed to do that. It's only designed to work from the center out. Right, but my focus is a circle map. It will never work because never, there's no parallel lines there. Right. But that okay. would be a problem if we had some near and dear association to the azimuth with equidistant projection, which I don't. I don't know about you. I don't have that problem. I, oh, well, that's the same. Don't have that, Plenty more I maps don't have that problem there. either. The, if, if, yeah, oh. that's a problem if you've got a reification of the azimuth with equidistant projection. The problem here is curved surface. Because if you look at it in one way, which would be example A, if you believe you live on a globe and the sextant that you're using is off of a curved surface, it makes the sextant inoperable because sextant can't work without two straight lines forming a corner, which gives you a vertex to get an angle. So boom, they're out there. If you say, well, actually, we believe that when we do that thing from the surface with the sextant, we're actually going from the center of the earth to the center of the moon, sun, and other bodies. You say, oh, okay. So even if we go there and take the measurement from the center of the earth and you project it from the center of the earth to the surface of a curved surface, uh, you got teardrop circle of equal altitude. So it doesn't work that way either. No matter which way, a curved surface cannot give you a circle of equal altitude and the correct zenith distance. Yeah, curved amazing. Surface. A circle's 2D. It's never going to work on a spherical surface with a curve. It has a bent radius then no such thing as bent radii you can't get this to work on a sphere it has to be a flat plane to measure the angle it has to be a flat plane in terms of the map projection it has to be a flat plane in terms of acquisition of the angle at the gp position to do triangulation this is a flat earth stone cold proof it's an annihilation of the globe because it simply cannot function and if they try to make it function you're going to need a flat plane for it so so why don't we get this out why don't we get this out Write it up, get it out, and get it into the schooling system. Get yeah, it into right somewhere. Now. Hold on. I'll tell you why. But Hold on, what's Neil proposing we do? Get it out, what do you mean? We are getting it out. This is live right now. 75 people are watching. I agree, and there should be 75,000 people watching, Nathan. But there's got to be a way that we could, we, could, we could write this up somehow and, and put it in as education. Why, why can't it go to the school system? It's true, right? It could be inserted like a like navigation class or something, right? Why not? But yeah, you'd have to construct a curriculum for that. Then maybe it could work. But anyway, I would a, like to make another a, point, if on. I may. How, how you interact or how you propose Big Brother should interact with your children in the school system, that's a completely different issue as far as I'm concerned. No. <laughs> Big Brother's no, a saying, this is this is education. No, Big yeah, Brother and his current... comprehensive education has a st spherical structure to it. The reification of sphere earth is part of the comprehensive system comprehensive education system in the western world. Now if you're saying well that's not acceptable, well, do the other thing. Well, seriously, you could make a curriculum out of it just so that somebody I could agree. take it. Right, for homeschoolers maybe, but you got to get yeah, through exactly. the gate. But you gotta get through the gatekeepers for the national. Yeah, right, this is yeah, out, yeah, out, this is out a, of jobs. This is a, a perfect example of me saying, your want to project what you know out onto the world is the thing that's holding you back in terms of your peace of mind generally and the people around you seeing you as fonds. Yeah, this is you saying, no. I, I am not cool with this. It must be no, the case that everyone no, else, no. everyone else's children know the information the way I know it, and this is the thing that they should be knowing so they know it's flat. That just says to me, you're not cool with it. No, I'm saying this is, this is groundbreaking. So why are we not breaking the ground?
I just told you because the. I, don't know we are. Just, I just literally told him. I'll just say it again. Because Big Brother's comprehensive education system is a heliocentric based system, Neil. I just told you that. You're misunderstanding me. Forget <laughs> it. Oh my God. Twice in one show. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I just don't a understand. A lot of people will be saying, out of a lot of jobs. I'm just saying, this is this is like, as you're explaining it, I'm seeing the whole thing, and I, I just think that more people should know about it. Well, what's so, stopping you? Okay, Neil? okay. What's no. stopping you? Right. I'm gonna write it up. I am, and I'm gonna exactly. go to them, and I'm gonna say, this is what's going on. This is the truth. Stop teaching this bullshit globe that I gotta hear on TV every freaking time I'm no, that's the, no, football no, no. game. No, no. I gotta see commercials. This no, 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 stop. That's the bit that you're not cool with. That's why you're not being like Fonz, my friend. You've gotta be more like Fonz. Be cool, be cool. Right. No. Don't go around dictating that everybody else needs to see it your way. That's how it is. It's yeah. not my way. It's the way. At the moment, it's it's... <laughs> you, you're not understanding what I'm trying to put down. You need to choose the highway, Neil. Every day. Let me give you an example. Show. Let me just give him an example, 10th. Right. The education system in this regard is no different to any other service that you pay for. You are paying for it. And it's a service. Right? So let's compare it to McDonald's. Do McDonald's not realise that flame grilling the meat is miles better for the taste? Everyone should know about this. McDonald's, everyone in the restaurant. Oi, everyone listen up in McDonald's. No, they should be flame grilling. No, no, no. That's a bit. Well, let's make it real meat. We're talking you. about education, not about hamburgers. We're talking about educating. Health, education, youth. it's a comparison, Neil. In that respect, it's taste, not even health. Just flat out food, very important. Everyone's got to eat it, right? If you don't, you die. In many ways, more There's important than the education. Cooking. I can argue it easy as a parallel. My point is, Neil, that you're, you're standing in a, somebody that's structured a service and offered it. Now you're paying for it whether you want to do it or not. But that's not the point. You can do the other thing if you choose to. Um, I would like to, I'd like to make an argument for why heliocentrism uh, has a purpose within society. And if I can make that purpose, then... Would you accept that as being a reason to teach it, Neil? I know where you're going. You think it's keeping everybody calm and tame. I don't, don't put words in his mouth. He hasn't what? told Why us would yet. You think he that? hasn't told us yet. Go ahead, John. Let's he's, hear it. He's mentioned it before. Well, not that it keeps it calm and tame, but just moments ago, we had a flat earther uh, being unreasonable, right? So it's not the natural inclination of people to be reasonable when paradigms are challenged right agreed okay people don't like changing stories that's right Look, john's calm collected measures not going to be interrupted by everyone go ahead john let's just get to the end of this point i want to hear it well and we know that in society those uh with uh what would you call it um sociopathic tendencies rise to power because that's what it requires of you. I'd so say, what good... I'd say psychopathic, but carry on. What what good would it do for everyone in the world to know that we're in a contained system on a flat earth for everyone else? Truth matters. Not what he asked. Well, people would stop investing Ash, and be less no, interested are, in I, space stuff. It's not what he asked. Right? It's not what he asked. That's not what he asked, Neil. What benefit okay, would it Okay, what good did it do for you? What did it benefit you? Oh, me? Or are you asking yeah. John? Both of you. Um, no, I'm not involved. John's been sampled. Go ahead, John, if you want to answer that. Well, I, I do think it keeps people calm when they believe they have answers. What I tell you. But that's not what I'm saying. Because I don't think that everything that happens in this reality we experience is everything that can happen. And it might be better off for everything else if we just stayed where we're at. 
No, I, I don't. I do not accept that. You're thinking that there's going to be total anarchy. No, there'll be people coming to the truth and then questioning, okay, why were we taught that Earth is a sphere and that we're in a solar system and that those lights in the skies are planets? Why were we told that the sun was 93 million miles away? There would just be inquiry. That's that terrible. That would be reasonable. That's terrible. That would, that would be a reasonable position to take, but do you really think people would behave that way? If they just started teaching tomorrow that the earth was flat in school, do you really believe that everybody would be like, well, just forget about all that NASA stuff. Let's let's stare at the sky now. No, it's totally unacceptable for the people who control us. Absolutely unacceptable that anybody says anything starting why. No, that's definitely not why they give you a comprehensive education. Not so you can go around questioning stuff. On the contrary, Neil. So you're saying that Offering this information in a comprehensive structure would potentially lead all of the people in the comprehensive structure to start asking questions of the people who control them. This is definitely not going to happen, Neil. Well, yeah. then, well, then you might as well then you might as well teach kids that two and two is four, three and three is I mean two and two is five, <laughs> three and three is nine, and uh, eight times nine is one hundred and fifty-two. Okay, well, then do that, that then, Neil. Do that then. What, what do you think the purpose of this show and other shows like this are? Uh, and, and let's just stay on this show five days a week. What's the purpose of this show five days a week? That's a very good point. Please smash the super chat to support this channel. What and that? support Nathan. To educate and support. Okay. So, yeah, that answered it. So the purpose of this show is to educate and show people what reality is, what geometry is, what our earth is. Now, uh, someone tunes that comes in. secondary. Secondary to smashing Hang. super chats, hitting PayPal no. lists, <laughs> keeping me in a, a roof. Well, well, the show must survive. So yes, hit the super chat. But the point I'm, I'm trying to make here is that we are doing the right thing here. We are questioning the model. We're breaking its back. It can't survive. It's died already 10 times over. And we, you think we just because we've proved that we can just insert it in the whole public education system in just one fail swoop. No, it's not no. going to happen. That way. What's going to happen is more people are turning to the logic and the critical arguments and becoming flat earthers. OK, and that's how we grow. Once that number rises, then things and people in position can cause things. But right now, there's so much cognitive dissonance just within people who know me. Uh, that it's like they avoid me. Well, that that whole thing has to change where they come and say, you know what? Ten of my friends are just like you. I'm, I'm going to look into this now. <laughs> That's the moment we're waiting for because right now I'm the odd man out. Exactly. That and I do have Lamborghini payments to cover. How many people you say are watching the show, Nathan? Just under 100, 100 at the moment. right now. Not fast enough. It's got to be something we could do. Nathan, you could have had a V8. Please share the show. Any evidence of the distance to the sun? Ah, uh, yeah. I according to schools, it's 93 million miles away. Might as well just stay with it then. That's very what? helpful, Neil. Very helpful. You can't even measure. What do you suggest we do? We, we start a military and conquer the world so we could force everybody to, to think no, the truth? No, that's not what well, I said. Well, what else then? No, he's starting to sound a bit like Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> Construct it. Adam, you could do it. Put a paper together and present it somewhere. I don't know. You're sort of smart ones. I'm just a construction worker that sees the truth and wants it spread. What's the problem with that? So Why spread am I it. A hard time? So I spread do. it. Okay, that's it. Everyone is spreading it next. Right. Everybody wants to be like Han and just go, yeah, Sodom. Let's go. Let's sort this out on our own and not concern ourselves too much with them. I, I don't... Uh, back to the question about the sun, uh, I don't think you can even measure an angle to it to assert that you have a radius to get a 93 million mile sun now. Right, you're going to need R for that and we've debunked it with the black swan. No, no they, they can't even get to R now because they can't measure the angle to the sun as it moves across the sky. That's correct. Any evidence of axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? We 
We don't expect to see Coriolis deviation. No, not the last time I, sh I shot my gun at the gun range, I didn't aim uh, 300 feet to the right expecting my target to turn there. I've not done this one for a while. I've got the opposite. Um, the Mickelson Gale observation. Um, did a simple bit of apparatus set up to observe the stars and differentiate by the path of light through a water-filled telescope um, to alter the rate to see whether it was the Earth that was moving or the stars that was moving. Um, and from that observation, it became obvious that it was the stars that were moving, um, not, not, not the Earth. Um, so a good bit of logic there to oppose that suggestion that we're rotating. Wasn't that Michael Bowden <laughs> as opposed to Mickelson Gale? Yeah, and Bowden's the guy that reads it. He's the old geocentric um, Christian dude, Malcolm Bowden. He reads... A lot of good stuff because he's not a flat earther, but he is very he's geocentric based. But yeah, he's the one that highlights that, and he's like a Sunday school teacher, and an old pastor reading it out. It's uh, <laughs> which he is, I think. Just to give Adam, some is that Aries failure? Aries failure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's Mick, that's 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 the one for Einstein, isn't it? Um, no, no, Aries failure is where you take a telescope and then you point it at the compensatory degree angle for the rotation of the earth now if the earth is moving and then you've tilted the uh, telescope full of water correctly then the light will still reach the uh, the the lens but if obviously if earth's turning beneath it then the telescope moves as the path of light travels through the slowed down motion in the water and it'll hit the sides and you won't see it so if you can still see it, then you've got the stars moving because it doesn't make any difference. It travels through the light. It travels slower through the water, but you still see it. Whereas if you don't, i.e. the telescope's moving along the ground, then the slowing down of the path of the light will mean that you no longer see it. That's Aries failure. Shout out to Sacred Knowledge, a.k.a. Universe that you are a slave that's from matrix isn't it yeah that's the truth that's what um morpheus tells neo when he asks him what what is the truth the truth is that you are a slave born into bondage well yeah that's true and part there's of that a new bondage, matrix coming part, out part of the bondage is the education system or the general Western world society that you're exposed to when you're discussing these sorts of things after your Western world education. That's that's the bondage described by Morpheus. That that analogy has an argument to it too, though. Bondage analogy? What are you talking about? Globe shaped butt plugs or something? No. No, you're in bondage to your creator. <laughs> Well, that depends on how you look at it. Well, yeah, exactly. This is where we come back to what does it matter in terms of John. This is kind of ruining his own point here. But what's your allegiance to if the ontological primitives are answered incorrectly and nature created it all? Well, then you're a slave to the infinite vastness of nothing, just the nature itself. That's what you're a slave to. But that's a bait and switch, isn't it? Because you're not a slave to nature. You're a slave to men. It's a complete lie. But it, but in the Matrix analogy, it wasn't men. It was a, a source that they spoke about. Yeah, the psychopathic control grid. That's not the source, Nathan. You know that. The source is just the psychopathic control grid, and they're just giving it some shiny light at the centre of it to make it more dramatic. But... Thomas Sheridan talks about the psychopathic control grid all the time. He even calls it the Matrix. Matrix just means womb. That's all it means. It means you're inside something, encompassed by it. Well, we are encompassed by the control system of the Western world society. That's men. 
That's not machines, but that's how the analogy puts it in the Matrix. A slave to bondage in a very literal sense when you've got pipes shoved down your throat in a pod. Well, no, in a very metaphorical sense, we are slaves to the society we live in. Now, how much you choose to take part in that bondage is is actually, a, to a certain degree, under your control. Sometimes you have to put the straw man coat on. Sometimes you can take it off. Oops, I forgot to say Neo, says uh, Sacred Knowledge, a.k.a. Universe. Yeah, I knew what you meant, though. We talk about the Matrix a lot here. Thank you very much for the Super Chats. Really appreciate the support. I popped um, the link to Aries Failure in there, and it's got a clip for the Malcolm Bowden description as well, so it's in the chat if anyone wants it. Oh, brilliant. You posted it in the live stream chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Have you got it? Core, but it's but it's gone. Oh, yes, hmm? there you are. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Any scientific evidence of gravity? <sighs> Gas go down, go boom, boom. No, it but doesn't. it goes in all directions, but it still goes down, go boom, boom, because of something electric or whatever. That's where we rounded out the pre-show. How much downward bias does a gas particle moving up have? Depends on his education. I've got to get a cup of coffee, Arwin. It's terribly stressful, your response to that question that didn't come. Well, things moving left have a measurable right. But, uh, uh, right? Right. Something going Right. Yeah, it's a negative right value. There you go. <laughs> negative <laughs> right value. So, so, so kind of the antithesis of claiming that it's got a right when it's going left would be a negative left. Definitely yeah. not left. Did the rumpus use that? I no, don't we, know. The rumpus was the one that said, uh, yeah, I know it's moving up, but it's still accelerating down. That was his... Thing. It was amazing. Yeah, we're getting it now from both sides. We're getting it from flat earthers as well. That's right. Bob Nodell's legacy is using rumpus arguments. Isn't that just special? Well, isn't the the whole idea of the uh, dielectric acceleration kind of created in the minds of Globers to begin with? <laughs> like that's where they've got this idea from was from Globers who yep. push it out there. So yeah. that, there's no surprise there. Electric universe Globers. It's very much a heliocentric notion. Yes, correct. Never mind. Not our problem. Unless it comes our way and then it becomes our problem and I have to react to it as I did in the pre-show. It's still weird, though, because it, it still goes that that whole idea, downward bias, goes under the assumption that gravity is a force when it's not. So it's really odd that they took this direction. Any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology or astrophysics? More than likely than not, but you're going to need half of that. Maybe email-based hypothesis. When they're describing their phenomenon, they will use an R value. Yes, that's true. They're going to need R for a presuppositional description in astrophysics. Any evidence you can have gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container to press upon in the first place? There was somebody in my chat today trolling with actually believing the columns of gas thing again. They really think that now. It's like it just manifested. The ridiculous notion that is just blatantly wrong has manifested in their minds now as the go-to truth. They really believe it. Well, if gas falls down, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, that just asks. I was going to move on to the next housekeeping question, but no, gas doesn't fall down. Go ahead. 
That's what I'm saying. If gas falls down, then you can justify a downward bias, but that's not what gas does. So that's why they're doing their columns of air pushing things down. Every time this comes up, Adam gives a really beautiful description of how weather systems work and operate. But, you know, you can take those notions which are based in entropy and require containment. Just trying to think of all the things Adam summarizes while he does it better than I'm now doing it. Um, you don't have this reification into columns, layers. None of that's true. You know, you're watching a process in action. You know, when you the, describe the a weather front, it's not some wall moving across. Go ahead, Adam. You, you, I'm butchering it anyway. No, well, the reification really is when we use the term fluid dynamics with a gas. And we do that um, because it does have a kind of fluid dynamics to it, that pressure system, not the individual gas. The indivi If we were to try and work out the individual gases, molecules, behavior at the, at, at the pressure boundaries, it just becomes... In, insane as you can imagine the computation so what we do say is it, it approximates to, to fluid dynamics and that's how we describe the way different pressure systems interact with each other whether that's meteorologically or and, and pharmaceutics and stuff we're still going to use those that reification for, for want of a better phrase because we know it's not a fluid we know it's not actually acting like a fluid but the simplest way to mathematically describe it is like a fluid um, because to try and and this is the difference you see fluids act like fluids and all the molecules act like a fluid but gases act a bit like fluids when they've got different pressure systems but they don't because each individual gas molecule is behaving as it always does like a gas molecule so it's, it's moving freely in um, all directions so it's, it's this interface of the boundary layers where this approximation to fluid dynamics comes in but can i ask something because I kind of, from what I've seen out there, I think that gas, when it's still in its concentrated form, does really act kind of like a fluid, but it never lasts. It always, over time, mixes in, and then those elements, those traits, stop, right? Yeah, so it, at the boundary, when, when you see these COTs, what have you got? You've got one lovely mix of air, and then you've got this dense concentration of a single... Uh, substance, CO2, for example, yeah? Well, this is where it's acting like a fluid at, at that boundary layer, yeah? Until, see, what's happening is it's dissolving, isn't it? As well yeah. as, as thing, yeah? And, uh, Both ways, one in the other, the other in the not, one. Not, yeah, but a, a much, if you think about, you've got that dense CO2 um, cloud, yeah? Um, it's harder for the air to penetrate into it, yeah? So... The entropy is going to go the other way, isn't it? Because the pressure goes from high to low. Yeah, that's the way entropy is going to resolve. Um, eventually, stuff will get in the middle. But the way it's going to do is it's going to, that is, it's the higher pressure system is going to eventually diffuse into the lower. And then it's all going to become one. Right, that's the direction. Yeah. But still, so it does kind of work like a fluid in a concentrated form versus other gases. But here's the issue, and we all know this by now, but just stated anyway that tiny little property in its concentrated form is then uh, like magnified and made into the assumption that it literally that gas can actually sit like liquid versus gas and that would explain supposedly how it's just sitting next to space but that never happens because any fluid situation only happens because the gas pressure is stable enough right to do that versus the other gas in that same container because if it's just open it's all just going to explode in all directions every single time doesn't matter and even liquids do that like water evaporates if it's not contained right it's the reification Armin, i would say of of the 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 pressure system behavior as we see this, we can visualize it in, like with the CO2 pour, et cetera. So reification of that into a suddenly thinking that the gas molecules individually are behaving in a different manner. That's that's the point of confusion, I think. I think, think people suddenly think the gas molecules as individuals are doing something different, going down, go boom, boom. They're not. They're not. We're, when we're looking at these things, we're describing pressure systems, not 
gas, individual gas molecule behavior. That wouldn't change. Right. But I just, I always found it the most ironic part that they basically straw man the fluid to act like liquid, but they still overlook that if you put a water in a vacuum, it's going to evaporate, right? They know that it does that. So why would they assume that gas would be kind of like a liquid in a, because it's a fluid and then not do that? versus a vacuum of space. That's the part where really the suspension of disbelief has to like prevent you from seeing that. Right? Yeah, I think everyone's pondering it, Owen. Just, yeah, an excellent summary from both you and Lazen. Well, it makes me think about um, the guy at work who everybody laughed out of the room when he talked about taking all the tops off of the gas containers to save money for the company. You know, it, his education um, failed him at that moment. You know, but you can kind of see why it does if you believe that there's a downward bias to gas. That is silly. I don't know why they keep pushing that. Oh, I do know why. Well, that's funny because the the, uh, the lid is on the top. So if there's a downward bias, why is the lid on top and not towards the bottom? But I don't understand why they they're not they're not understanding the fact that all vectors means all vectors. So then there's no downward bias. I don't understand what they're they're not putting together. It's either near or there. Do you want me to do it for you, Neil? Let's just try it. You don't understand. If I assume a downward bias, blah, 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 blah. There you go. They want space. They want space. They need space. Well, that, that is the origin yeah, they, of the They argument. need gravity to work. They need gravity to work for everything else to work. Correct. They need their space. They're a bunch of Ken Wheeler fans. Work, you say? That sounds like action. That sounds like a force. It doesn't do anything, though. It's just a description of something that doesn't actually really happen in the real world, only in a fictional medium. Well, when a person doesn't concede, it says to me that they're religious zealots. Uh, I don't know about. Sometimes it's just people. It's easier to lie to somebody than to convince them they've been lied to. Is that Mark Twain? Um, yeah, I think it is. Or it could be pride too, not wanting to be wrong. I just looked it up. It's actually Popeye the Sailor Man. Well, blow me down. Well, I mean, it is pride because the the moment you claim it, you know, nobody wants to be wrong. That's just, you know, who who wants to be wrong about everything they say, you know, or anything they say. Sin so cleanser die slow. No, no, sin cleanser die slow, and I can name a few more. They're all Ken Wheeler Muppets. Oh, we've got Harp and Sin Cleanser here. And I, I did I don't think it's true for Harp, actually. This is going to come back to haunt us. I just want to correct that. That's, this isn't true of Harp. I think he was playing devil's advocate for the most part. Yeah. I, we should I have Harp, Harp explain to Sin Cleanser the answer from earlier discussion. Joking, right? Harp was as bad as Arwen in that regard. Even when he was fighting for a cause he doesn't necessarily fully believe in, he still didn't concede either. <laughs> no difference. Like I Hold say, on, Nathan, what was, what was Neil, the question hold on, hold you on. asked him? So this, this, it's a case in point. It's a brilliant example if I use Arwen rather than Harp to be less antagonistic because Arwen will know where I'm going. So when Arwen's fighting Devil's Advocate as Ballwin, right, even when a position he knows is flawed and knows is a losing position gets shown to be wrong. The 
instinct is to still rumpus the point and chant your claim again. That's just human nature. So not chant the claim again, to clarify because you must have misunderstood. You see, you see right on cue. So, uh, yeah. And also throw in an ad hom that you don't understand. Very subtle, Arun. Very subtle. Okay, but I wanted <laughs> to say, what was the question you asked him? When the gas particle is going up, you ask him what bias does it have down, correct? That's correct. Okay, so I went on mute and I asked the two guys that work with me the same question, and both of them said none. But then, then you know you have a win. Why worry about those people? My goodness. Yeah, that's, that's why I spent. Win. That was the point that I spent ten minutes demanding a concession because I'm right. I didn't get one, right? Well, if you, you didn't get a concession. If you ignore the meaning of words, then you can keep arguing. That's what they do, very literally. Even when I literally beg them to paraphrase back my rebuttals, they'll give me a one-word answer. I have repeated it back. Expands. No, no, that, that, that isn't my rebuttal. That's one word. Well, that is a very similar thing in the Discord chat on, on Saturday after you, you went. Um, QE hung about for a bit. And I, I kind of oh, tried Saturday. to play. Right. Yeah, you was there, Arwen. Yeah, um, yeah. I tried to play moderator for a bit. As we just tried to progress to this point, I think it was with Data and somebody with a Theo Upper Offer Offer his name. Um, and literally, a QE just quit after half an hour and went to Archery, I think. Um, it's all, I'm playing moderator and literally just pulling it back just to ask them for the description of science, um, scientific theory, yeah? And it was just infuriating, yeah? And after QE went, it then descends into what, what you're saying, which is just rambling, to, to put simply, of other people's words that they don't understand, that they've watched on a YouTube video, to the point that they were bringing up dielectrics and one moment well see what you prove what you're on about um demonstrate that e equals mc squared doesn't work in, ma in magnetics now that, that was a trigger because i watched right. lots of stuff right then went on and goes, i can show you how this this point this fixed point uh, no energy point works here and then i suddenly realized what he's on about and the, the, these are guys that have no idea what they're on about themselves they go off and watch other people's stuff on on magnetics and and learn to parrot this crap but when you're actually asking to explain it or point out that you've watched the same video, yeah, I watched Dr. Cheese, um, the Navy guy, do the same thing. And he's got a, a similar Ken Wheeler thing. He opposes Ken Wheeler. I think he talks, he would call Ken Wheeler wrong. But this is the next thing that's coming in. But they're not coming in with anything they can substantiate or explain to you. All they've got is this chanting that, that follows that every time you ask for a bit more inquiry, you're being obstructive or it requires another enchantment of that incoherent um, stuff that, that comes out. And it, it's exceptionally frustrating. Um, and it's very rude because I think they know what they're doing. Because they, at no point are they able to explain the point. Um, yeah, well, I know they're the cornered. Right. On, yeah, on, exactly. On. Sinclair and Zeronia in the pre-show knew he was cornered. And the moment he knew he was cornered was when he chuckled at me. I had a little laugh. He knows he's got nowhere to go. But because he knows he's being obstructive, and that's the only route he's got, it's a bit of a snigger when you called on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to answer this, am I? Let's quick think of another thing that I can distract away from it with. That's what their brain tells them to do. Well, that's infuriating. Now, I'll just lose my temper, but of course the problem with that for an audience member that's uninitiated is that they look at it and go, well, Nathan's being unreasonable. He's getting more and more angry and demanding this and that and the other it's like what a concession when i'm right yeah i don't see any reason why not to i'm right he's wrong he's poisoned the audience's ears with crap about things that are going up actually having a downward bias it's nonsense well once you've done that and they're just like now nah, i'm not going to concede that i'm going to repeat it 10 more times though ignoring everything you've said and even if you beg me to repeat back the rebuttal in full i'm not going to do it i'll say one or two words of it and then chant the same thing again for an 11th time what you get extremely infuriating right. adam absolutely see, it's, correct it's, 
it it's turns political. Show, just, just to short sell. It's fine on your show because you're in charge. You're doing it. And there is a point to it. But when you're not on a show and it's not going out there, it's very little point. I've got no desire to take him to that knife ten point. What I did, did try to put out to Righteous as he popped in was this is the bullshittery that's ruining the Discord because the mods need to deal with this kind of stuff because it's just destroying the conversation. Now, we have chats, um, me, Brian, the guys, after, after the after show, and they get very, very heated, yeah? But we, we add on each other, yeah, at times, but all the time, we're not trying to pull the wool over each other's eyes. We're discussing genuinely, and when we're challenged, we do our best to explain to the others our point, not what's going off here with other flat earthers. Just flim flam with your new religion that you can't verify or anything. And it's getting very noticeable. And um, I, I appeal to Righteous on, on Saturday to listen to it because it is, it's, like I say, if, if you're doing it in the show, there's a point in you carrying on, but I'm not spending my time there doing chatting like that because it's not genuine. And it's as disingenuous as when you're talking with the ballers. And it's very noticeable. Run over. That's why I stopped going at him. Like, I don't I don't even mess around with Discord hardly anymore. That's exactly why I stopped going. Exactly. To speak to Neil, in terms of what I see as value in this regard, when people nag me and say, you're not in the real trenches, you're not here when your live show's not running, and you don't get the same reactions from people when you've got a live show running. It's like, I don't want to be around when the show's not running, because that's the point of the show to disseminate the information out to an actual audience because as it's just been said by adam and john when you're into it and there's nobody actually listening other than the people around you and they're not there to listen to you or paraphrase back your responses they're just there to chant then there is really very little point in doing it so you go well if i'm going to be like fonz i'm not going to be sitting here repeating the same thing 10 times when it's definitely not going to get through and i get a chuckle from the respondent but with an audience listening, it's well worth it because they get to see how unreasonable the person is. Unfortunately, like I say, I descend into seeming verbally unreasonable in, in an attempt to get a concession. But what I also do, to speak to Adam's previous point, was I will typically, more than once, paraphrase back to the best of my ability what I'm about to take apart. Sometimes with quotes, sometimes with verbatim quotes of the person's claim given to them prior to the actual annihilation now normally when i try to do that that is to say summarize their point they'll interrupt before i actually get to the rebuttal itself no no no. what i mean by that is blah 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 blah, blah. and they'll talk straight through you when all you're doing is summarizing what you've just listened to 30 seconds earlier for probably a prolonged period of time a five minute waffle about nonsense they've watched on a youtube video they don't really understand and then when you get to the okay i'm just going to summarize what you've said and then take it apart now i don't normally add that step as well because i expect people to just listen to back to me saying what they've just said to me and accept that that's what they've said. More times than not, they'll actually find an objection at that stage. That is to say, I'm summarising back what they've said verbatim and they'll go, no, 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 no. The words I use when describing that won't work when I come to this other aspect of what I'm going to describe now. So I'm going to disagree with my own bloody words before you've re refuted them because at this stage, I know I'm going to double speak later. So technically, I've got to disagree with my your summary of my own words at this stage. So you don't even get to the rebuttal. But my point is that I'm summarising their argument to demonstrate to both them and the audience that I do listen and do understand what it is they're claiming, how they're claiming it, and then go on to refute it. Normally, chanted through, shouted at through, ignored completely. And then when the return comes, it doesn't come with, well, I understand your rebuttal. You're saying that my summary is wrong for this reason and that reason, but... It isn't because that never happens ever. Well, they'll say you don't. They'll say you don't understand. That's what yeah. they'll say. Yeah, you don't understand. Not your rebuttal that blah 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 and X Y Z isn't correct because just you don't understand my claim. Here's my claim nine more times. Exactly. No, that, that that's that's where I lost it. I'm like that, and I'll I'll quote the point again. So we're discussing dielectrics and just any evidence for it and when i'm going through it one of the rebuttals was well you explain then why like i said magnetics disproves e equals mc squared and i can i won't bore you with it now um but i've watched the video but you you put it back to them to to just clarify and 
they don't understand what they're, they're saying. They're not able to put it into words, what, what they then challenge one, because they don't understand it. It's not there for learning. They're not there to share some knowledge with you. They're there to try and either confuse or inflate their own ego that they think they're some you know, high priest of some hidden knowledge. And it's, it's exceptionally noticeable, uh, the yeah, different attitude. And, it's complete um, wank. Oh, right. Yeah. So now you found out something that the Western world doesn't know. You're going to go forth from that as some bloody self-professed guru in nonsense and then go around spurting it based on the crap you've watched from YouTube when you haven't actually assessed what's being claimed or any issues with what's being claimed. You don't even understand what's being claimed, but you obviously know better than everyone and you're in this privileged position to know it. Therefore, you're going to bark it at the people that actually know better, like Adam, in this respect, when there's no, it serves him no benefit to affirm your lack of understanding in your own claim in the first instance to then take it apart. It doesn't serve Adam any, any benefit whatsoever, does it, Adam? Not in the slightest. And what I will just... There's a good time. I spent three hours uh, midweek chatting um, with Flat Arthur. Uh, with a, uh, in one of the Indian Discord channels. And what a difference. It was still heated at times. You're bloody dickhead! Uh, the odd time to each other yeah. and stuff like that. Um, but it calmed down. And, uh, but always people were, again, trying to make a point uh, and trying to be to explain this point to other people, not rage at them. There was a couple of times where somebody, you should watch this video. And it's, as it was Arthur pointed out, don't come here. And do that to people, yeah. That's that's just exactly what it is a kind of baller attitude. But I say it was a very noticeable difference. It was still passion in the room, um, but the, the the purpose of the room felt very different, is what I'd say. Right, and when come here and do that, I think you mean Discord, because in terms of people coming here and doing that, it's a very different tale. You know, there's a very different purpose in terms of people having it laid down on tape metaphorically i know it's digital now but you know what i mean actually getting it dedicated to air and having people relive that experience that's useful but in a in a discord server when no one's recording and it doesn't really matter although they might always be recording <laughs> there's you know on the off chance there's just there's no benefit because all you're doing is taking somebody that doesn't really understand their own belief they've then got it and decided that it's true but also decided that they're going to go out and punt it it's like, mm, you've got to be cautious. At the beginning of the debates, when all of us here, I'm going to speak for everybody, I hope, if you disagree, feel free, but all of us were less educated in this subject when the debates began. And a lot of us seemed, at least if you go back and check, a lot more humble. And that is to say that because we didn't know, we were like, I don't know. And therefore, let's investigate and debate about it. That was one of the reasons why I did the show, pick the format. Because I knew that it would lead me to a better understanding of it. But you're not going to get there if you're completely closed off to anything you ever hear ever. You know, actual um, challenge to the thing that's being presented, based on an understanding of what's been presented first, that's how things progress your knowledge. Now that's why it's very useful to go back to some of those old debates and see how it goes moving forward. But back then, we were more humble because we were more ignorant. Now it may appear to the untrained that now we're far less humble. Yeah, you damn skippy we're not. Because we don't need to be humble. I don't need to be humble about what I know and don't know. I just know it. That's it. What What's to be humble about? Now, if that's obviously... I just contextualise that. When it's in this setting, right, while we're being debated, this isn't the case when you're walking out on the street. You know, it's Thank totally God, different. I was about to challenge you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Here, when you've got some fundy chanting that gravity's real, that's what I'm talking contextually. Hey, Chocolate, good to have you. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Oh, just, just, just on that point of interruption. Yes, here uh, and when dealing with fundies and stuff. But actually, when I go into like Discord rooms, like on Saturday, when I'm, I am more humble. I want to be humble because I'm there because I am humble. Because if somebody's bringing up this dielectric stuff, there's something in it, whether it's to do with up and down or whatever. These are effects, and I'd like to know more about them. That's why I try to engage. That's why I chatted with Bob. Zach for so long on it, even though, yeah, and, and kept listening and keep trying to learn it. And I am, because this journey does make um, 
in, you individually very humble. I'm, I'm, I sit in a much more humble position about what science tells me now about reality uh, than what I used to think it, it did. So I, I would put myself in a much more humble place like that in terms of an openness to new ideas like that. But it doesn't mean just because somebody says it is, I'm happy to accept it. As soon as somebody says it is, I want to know why, just like I do with everything else that has become facts and that would allow me to be less humble in a kind of debating environment. But I'd only be less humble with those facts. Other stuff, I'd, I'd still, I still want to learn because I don't bloody know either. I can recognise that they don't know when they try to explain it, but I'm humble enough to know that I don't know and there could be something in it. So teach me is what I why I bother to go into those forums, but it, it doesn't appear to be uh, their modus operandi of being there. Right, it's not reciprocated. May I, may I interject? You can, but after the live show has been rounded out by me, because if you are watching this on either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley Primary Extremes, then stay tuned, as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you are watching this live, this is where we bid you farewell. So a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you smashed the super chat, liked, commented, shared, subscribed, hit the join button, and all that good stuff. Speaking of hitting the join button, if you did want to watch that interaction between Sinclair and myself in regards to incoherent dielectric acceleration and a downward bias, then you're going to have to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 member as that comes out on Wednesday of this week. So be here or be sphere on the members only stream that will be uploaded in a couple of hours time. Once again, stay tuned if you're watching on either Premiering stream. I've been Nathan Oakley and I will see you all in the next video. <laughs>
adds more pressure. But too palpable for Neil, too palpable for Righteous. Both of them had to had to try and break that pressure, didn't they? <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. I was just trying to get through the sink cleanser. I didn't care. That's your show. You start it when you want. But yeah, I think Righteous uh, tried to step in there. Well, no, I got but... several people worried, calling like uh, messaging me in Skype, like, "Oh, is Nathan still going live? Why is he so late?" <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. People but Neil, the fact that the the fact that you were trying to get through to him meant that you could feel the tension in the air as well, Nathan. And, and I'm trying to say too, like it Absolutely. was there. It was it was teeth grindingly. Like what? What? I en- no, I enjoy it because then I know the show is going to go on longer. So I don't want to remind him that the show start, needs to start. Keep going, Nathan. Keep going. I mean, the show's going to get, you know, bumped around in terms of schedule over the next couple of weeks because at some point I've got to go out and buy gifts for my loved ones and all the rest of it. And there's various things that I can only do during times that the show's running. So, I'm, you know, there's going to be late shows. I mean, I will let you guys know in the Skype chats and such when that happens. But, you know, there, there will be a certain amount of jigging around. And in a way, I had that in the back of my mind while I was starting late today. It's like, you know, set a tiny precedent just going up to the Christmas date. So... People aren't shocked when it's like, no, it's moved around today for whatever reason. I did actually think I was going to be late starting full stop today because um, I went out and bought an amplifier. You know, I'm constantly moaning about broken amplifiers. I've got out of, I've got 12 channel of amplifiers, nine are broken. And um, two of the ones that aren't broken all were on the shelf working. I'd bought about six months ago. I'd, I'd saved my pennies quite literally. And what I've been doing was going through eBay and looking at old pro amps, trying to figure out what I, what I could utilize and use with my domestic gear um, to get it working because it's so much better value and so much higher quality if you know what you're buying and what it would be used for and how to use it. So, you know, while I've got basically no money to do any of that, I've been researching and researching and researching. And eventually I saved enough to buy one. So I bought one for about 60 quid, cheap in other words, that's about 20 years old, an old broadcast fan pro amp with no fans in it and it worked a charm i was like this is brilliant so i carried on researching it and then a couple of days ago um with me e-begging almost every other day going i'm gonna get a bill i'm gonna get a bill i'm gonna get a bill well today i did actually get the guy phone me or email me i should say from optoma going do you also want the bulb because they've obviously fixed it and they've got the bill they just need to know if i want an extra 300 quid slapping on it which i'd already confirmed i did so I'm like, yeah, I do want it to actually work when I get it back. Yes, please. Yeah, so they're preparing that bill. But about three or four, just before the weekend, somebody went back to one of my old uh, patrons and gave me a, a chunk of money. So I'm like, oh, fantastic. Because it meant that instead of literally the last two straight years, all I've done is stressed about amps. It's like a nonstop thing. So I went out and on eBay, I bought two secondhand multi-channel amplifiers. So I've now got tons more amp. I've bought uh, six more channels of amplification, you know, cheap as chips, you know, maybe 25 quid a channel or something like that. Very, very cheap, but lots of it. And it's pro gear. So I think it'll, I hope it'll be built like a tank and, and you know, keep the show running without me ever having to stress about bloody amplifiers again. Um, so there we go. So that's something I'm, I was stressing about. The reason I've preempted all that was because before the show started, when you're dealing with normal people and domestic hi-fi, which I've bought and sold for most of my life on eBay, um, it's just a fairly uneventful thing to do. When you're dealing with anything professional, pro gear, audio pro gear, you're suddenly dealing with complete numpties. Right? You're dealing with, you know, musos, basically, guitarists and drummers. I'm not saying all musos are thick, but certainly I've never experienced anything like it since starting to buy pro equipment totally different mentality from the people selling it like you like you putting them out by buying some off them <laughs> you know? it's just nuts so as a result to buy this amp one of the amps it's just an amp right <laughs> i've had to go and buy the guy packaging for his amp right and post him me post him a box so he can package it up and then post it to me and i'll be the one arranging that collection 
So I'll be paying for that too. This is just something I've, pa I've already paid him for, for the item. Now I'm having to sort out physically acquiring the thing by getting him a box and packaging so he can box it up. Um, and every step along the way, it's like I'm putting the guy out. It's like, I just want to buy something you've advertised on eBay. I paid full price. <laughs> what do you want? I paid you immediately. <laughs> it's not good enough. Look at the fees I've got was one of the objections he gave me. I'm like, I didn't ask you to put it on eBay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Moaning at me because he's got fees to pay at the end of the sale. Ugh. Anyway, that's my moan out of the way. That's what I was doing and that's why I thought I would be late. Because I'm sure you're all really deeply interested in this. No, everyone's fallen asleep. Nobody gives a crap about me buying products. Look, hopefully you'll never have to hear me talk about amplifiers. Once I've, once I've got over the excitement of these two new boxes coming, and I shove them on the rack, plug speakers in, press play, and it works, hopefully I'll never have to talk about it ever again, ever. Nathan, at the base level, every time you talk about it, you get into treble. Boom, boom. See, I think that's the appropriate time to go get a cup of coffee, not in the middle of the debate. Yeah, when someone's talking to you about something that could have a tumbleweed following it, unless you're technically inclined, you're not going to be in slightly interested in the last six minutes of what I've just said. But there we go. Some people are. 1% of 1% might be, if I'm lucky. For everyone else who's tuned out on this after show and got a cup of coffee, that is the appropriate time to do so. Not when you're being asked... How does the fundamental premise of your claim work when I show you how it's defeated with something going in the opposite direction? That's not the time to get a coffee. I was going to make a point, so can I do it now? Wait yeah. until people have made their coffees. <laughs> All right, I'll wait. Maybe they'll perk up. I was trying to think of a hi-fi analogy. I couldn't get there quick enough. Coffee analogy would have been easier. <laughs> a coffee pun, rather. Well, you can drip. Uh, when you get it, you can drip it on us. But we've percolated on this subject long enough. Let's have your example. Yes. All right. My example is this. So on the weekend, uh, I get a re uh, response on a comment I left on Rob Durham's video on his channel. And of course, you don't know who it is. I don't go into these other places. So if it's a decent enough question, I engage. So after back and forth with this fella, um, he decides to say, I'm dishonest. Well, at that point, I said, look, I'm not going to talk to you, basically, or ad hominem me. You know, you don't do almost two years worth of research and continuous research that I'll keep doing and have someone call you dishonest and say, you know what, I'm, I'm talking to a person who actually cares and wants to know why I come to this position. When we're dealing with normal people, I don't mind good questions. I don't mind another meeting or any of that. But when it's over the internet in a chat room, you don't know who it is, but you find out later it's one of these ball tarts. So I stop it. Then uh, you get all these challenges from the normal cast of unsavory characters that we deal with. You know, you're afraid to debate me and you're scared, blah, blah, blah. Well, if I was scared, why would I put out information after research? I put it out. It disturbed you. You know where I'm at five days a week. I'm not looking to debate you, but they're saying I'm afraid to debate them. Well, if they want to debate me, they know where to find me. And I put these out and they don't ever answer those. They just go there and make up stories like I'm afraid to debate them. Well, no, I put out the material, which means I'll stand behind it. Uh, so if you want to debate me, you know where to find me five days a week. I don't go to other channels. I might go to Mitchell's. I might go to, you know, one of my friends' channel, but I don't have a desire to go to anybody else's channel. And if you want to debate the research, bring your own research, convince me my research is faulty, and I'll change my mind. But calling me names, challenging me, telling me I'm afraid, it just shows how weak they are. And this is why I don't like talking to these clowns, because all they do is ad hom. If they had something, they would bring it up, destroy the research and that's what they can't do so they have to call names this is who we're dealing with they, they seem to think it's five years ago when they were still relevant 
They haven't realized like all their yep. arguments have been destroyed, and now they sit in the backgrounds and the bleachers talking about, oh, you guys don't debate me, debate me, debate me. Meanwhile, we're here every day. Well, I am what? scared to debate them. Well, I'm, I am scared to debate them uh, because they're psychotic. Most of them are just psychotic, and I, I, that freaks me out. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to engage with that, you know. So I guess well, they could call. They it want weird. you on their terms. They want you on their terms. So they could mute when they have to mute, or they could rumpus when they have to rumpus. They won't do it on an honest platform where you can hear somebody's argument and then rebut it, like you can here. Well, all they got to do is destroy my research and my claim. They don't need to debate me. Just make me look silly by destroying the claim and the research and the citations that I give. That well, they issue. pretend they're doing that. They're pretending, you know, they're holding up an act and saying, this is disproving you. Not that there's any logical consistency in it, but they act like they do. Well, then well, then why, why do they need to debate me if they think they've won already? Uh, well, it's just summarized by Neil, and this has been discussed recently, but uh, not Neil. Yeah, Neil, but um, by Brian um, who's and Rich Mitchell from Australia also. So... Not because I want to segue back onto audio, but if you take my amp analogy earlier, I'm saying I'm having to jump through hoops for this amp that I've bought, purchased to, to actually physically get it to me, right? Well, when Neil said, they want you on their terms. Well, it's the equivalent of me going, I want your amp. Now, can you box it up and send it to me? And the guy goes it's mine it's my amp what's in it for me giving you my amp well i just want it yeah but it's cost me money well just give it me and give it me under my terms you coward no the way it works in normal society with anything that's of value be it time or a product is you get paid for that so it's not give me your amp it's i will pay you money and then you will give me something so that there is something in it for you. Now, in the case of they want you and they want it on your terms, it's like you strolling up to that girl in the classroom when you're at school because you fancy her and going, you are going to come with me to the cinema on Saturday night because I'm super confident that you are going to want me on my terms because I want you on my terms. So you're going to be there on Saturday and they go... No. Now, unless they're a whore, they're not going to demand payment for it. But me, I'm a total whore. So I want payment. You want my time. <laughs> well, I told them I'm $5,000 an hour if they want that. So did Mitchell and so did Ryan. But they don't want to pay for it. Well, I offered the ballers, look, you can get a shout out from my channel if you donate to my PayPal, right? I'm not going to go on your channel, but I'll give you an honest shout out and I'll even link to your channel, even if you're like fight the flat earth or whatever. I'll do that, right? But yeah, make it a substantial amount, right? At least 50 euros and I'll do that. And that's it. I'm not going to go on those channels again. They'll just like play stupid sound bites over me again. Well, they exist because of us. Let's starve them to death because no one's going to listen to them. Because they're nonsense. They don't even know what a level line is. They don't know what straight is. They don't know what a 90 degree is. The whole essence of Neil, celestial Neil, navigation. Neil, Neil. Yeah, sorry. I'm not on mute. Oh, boy. The whole essence of celestial na navigation is 90 degrees. Whatever altitude you get of any star or luminary, you have to minus from 90 degrees. You, you have to show how 90 degrees relationship works with a curved surface. Well, you can't. It's over. Bye-bye. It's done. Yeah, you're going to need a flat plane for that. that that's how quick this argument is won. Uh, well, oh, what's the altitude of that star? Oh, 50. So how do you know... What's the next move? Oh, we got a minus it from the zenith. What zenith is that? 90. Oh, your zenith, right? Yeah. So that's a co-altitude? Yeah. So why do you minus it from 90? Isn't that a right angle? Yeah. Well, how can you have a right angle on a curved surface? 
Well, it's a local right angle. What do you mean local right angle? That GP, that star is 3,000 miles away. You call that local? I call you local. It, local right angle? Is that like, a, is that like locally flat? <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Let's not get into that. There are no right angles on a spherical surface. No, 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 no. There's no local right angles either. You need a straight no. line. They haven't got one. No right angle to acquire. No. But if but if the angle wasn't local, would it still be ninety degrees? It's never <laughs> ninety on a sphere. That's a big problem, as that's how it works. It works on a flat plane. That's why I say you're going to need a flat plane for that. How much you know would it be on a on a globe? On the well, globe? You, know, you know what's great about that uh, is what Rod Durham came out with, because they will say, well, the nautical almanac and the air almanac, all of those formulas are based from the center of the earth where we cut the globe in half and we have a plane. I go, oh, the center of the earth, huh? So that's where your two lines meet to create the vertex? Yeah, that's right, that's where we get it from. And it's the complementary angle on the surface. So the surface doesn't have to be flat or straight, it could be curved. I said, great. So you're getting it from the center. Now let's project that circle of equal altitude from the center to the underneath crest of a curved surface. And then you have teardrops and it doesn't work. So you're dead there too. So it doesn't matter. They lose either way. Also, oh, now it's, that it's, you're it's the it other up. way around. It's not the surface angle is complementary to the angle measurement from the center of a presupposed spherical earth. There's an angle measurement actually being made at the surface. It's not complementary to the presupposed spherical angle it's measured on the surface and you're going to need a flat plane for it yeah we know that it's actually measured at the surface for sure no one's at the center of the earth in their math just in their math not in reality well it works if i have a vertex at the center no it doesn't because when you project it out that circles a teardrop on the mercator map and so it doesn't work either way it doesn't work no matter if they uh beg the question sunlight coming in parallel they, they've lost on every single front because of that don't say 90. <laughs> can, can i say something because i've been thinking about this whole what rob durham basically uh yeah showed us with his video premiering on my channel with the night owl show six by the way but like i'm kind of shocked because if that specific map layout is used for this process, for that the circle of equal altitude, for that calculation, that has like pretty massive implications, you see? Because that means that the North, at least the North, is not, well, it's not like the center. No, that's wrong. So what you're doing is you're confusing how they've got to the Mercator projection in the first place. The claim that it's come from a spherical projection is incorrect. That's what it's claiming. That's how they say it's done. Can it be right. done that way, given that Earth's not a sphere? No, it cannot. So where has it come from? Well, it's been back-engineered from the stars themselves. Yes. Right. But my point is is that if if you use that process on that rectangular map, then that means that there is a pretty big region up north, really, according to that framework. No, that's still incorrect. But so, when you say compared to that map, that map's made up of lines, isn't it? One of them being the equator line. Where, where did that line on that map come from, Arwin? Well, the movement of that celestial body averaged over the seasons. So, can you see how the lines that you're saying work, work in this way, because the map must be right? Well, no, because the way the map has been back-engineered from the stars was correct not the other way around, and certainly not from a sphere, because it doesn't work when you put it back onto it. But what about the actual process of basically Good question. I wonder circle. where you get there, finally. We don't no. know. That's the truthful answer. That's what we're most fascinated with at the moment. But, but have people then actually tested it? Like, done the circle thing? Sorry to be so sloppy about it, but done that sort of coordination circle thing really in the North region... Like, does it actually match the map? Yes. Like, is there a lot of territory yes, there? Yes, yes, yes. And yes, yes. it works. And that's oh, all we can say. Wow. At the, yes. But we can't do anything more than say what it does and how it works and work it does. Yeah, that's a perfectly... We've got that tick definitely in the box, Arwin. But what you asked wasn't that. You were like, 
well, how, how does that function from the map, bearing in mind that it's been derived from celestial movements in the first instance in terms of how the grid is made up? Well, that we don't know, but that back engineering, this is something that Adam prefaces when we're on Skype calls by saying, this isn't going to help us in the discussion. This isn't going to progress us in terms of annihilating globe Earth. It's not going to help us assert that the Earth is flat any more than we have already with the elevation angle argument. It's just an interesting look at how the back engineering works in the same way as if we hadn't begged the question of begging the question proof of nothing perspective hijacking earth curve calculations we now couldn't assert that string of information about that very uh methodology of assuming horizons or earth curve we wouldn't know how and why if we hadn't have done it well likewise even though we're not in debate with somebody who's claiming that this proves the sphere <laughs> well how could they they need a flat plane first we're still interested in how they they've back engineered the celestial objects <laughs> because of which I, I think it's going to be a, a bit of a struggle because of the amount of sh the sheer amount of information out there uh, in this regard this is the 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 tip of the spear when it comes to the deception about the land well what is the deception about the land well how it's mapped and what the territory is is the, the nature of deception the fact that it's claimed in the western world to be a spherical surface doesn't change the fact that there's thousands and thousands of maps all laid out very differently with different functions that can operate certain processes correctly if you use them in a certain way. None of them are perfect. I understand that. I'm not claiming like a perfect Euclidean resemblance of the territory, right? I'm just like, I'm seeing this corner here virtually in my mind where like, wow, there is actually a lot of territory there up north. So it isn't the center point because there's too much territory for that to actually fit in the center of a literal circle. That is my point. I'm like, so if that map is used, the rectangular for this coordination process, and there is just so much territory and that results in when you fold it all into a globe into the teardrop things, that means there's a lot of territory there. That's like remarkable evidence. We know Practical that anyway. based field evidence. So, when these maps were being developed, this is the bit we'll, we'll have to figure out. But you've got to know how and why this projection comes about. Now, the current story that we're given in this regards contrasts the Gaul Peters. Yeah. And from what I can fathom in terms of how the stars would distort as you go north, they must be to project them down onto the Mercator and have it work. Yeah? So yeah. the fact that those circles still go perfectly onto that map doesn't alter the derivation in the first instance. And I don't believe the story that they give us because of this exact aspect. When they say, well, the British wanted to, to, to make themselves seem bigger than the other countries. It seems like a really crap argument for doing it. And the amount of effort that you'd have to go to, if that was the case, to project it in the way that it does onto the Mercator and have it work with triangulation seems like it would be beyond the ability of any mathematician, in my humble view. Therefore, that story just seems like a load of nonsense just to justify getting the projection from the stars as they distort into the distance in the further extremities, above and below, I have to use the word, the equator, will end up with you having this distorted map on the ground with the territory being seemingly smaller on the map than it actually is. To still have it correspond with your one degree for 69 miles, nautical miles. That's an angle in the sky measurement that is obviously going awry to have to distort the map and shrink the size of the land to make it work still. So right. that, well, that we, there is, we, we know what's wrong, we just don't know why. And back engineering it will tell us, but no one's done that yet. So Well, I, I have some input that might be relevant because... Uh, yeah, I'm not a mathematician, uh, you all know that by now, but I've picked up on this detection from several people that are very much into that, that the celestials, actually the the axis rotation of the apparent celestial sphere seems to like slow down the further north you go. So it's it rotates less as you go further north at some point at a pretty uh, uh, steady rate. And that's like extra weird, right? To realize that. But just if this specific 
process of fi yeah, figuring out circle of equal altitude and all that, the triangulation process, if it just shows that there is more territory every time, if it just matches the reality, then that kind of indicates that there is a lot of territory no. there indirectly. No. That is my... No, that's, that's, that. This is, I think, the point of confusion. The map, whether it's a Mercator or whatever, is not... It, is not the territory it's not but if you're going to make like a circle it's a, at the equator is it gonna have to like be bigger like are when you do the process in the north are the circles effectively bigger compared to when you do it at the equator is there like a scaling thing that is automatically applied to well, or we, we know there's an issue how do already. i see this we, we, we can't answer other than to say from first-hand accounts the journeys that are travelled on that map have discrepancies in time. I was going to say distance, but based on the fact that the distance is taken from the sky in terms of an angular, measure, angular measurement, it's difficult to say that it's, an, it's a, an inconsistency in distance because you don't have the correct distance if the scale on the map's wrong. But what, what that will affect, and does by accounts that we've been given, is the journey time, i.e. if the scale changes and gets bigger then you're going to have a longer journey. If it gets smaller, you're going to have a shorter journey. Now, depending on the direction of travel that some people have described travelling to the South Americas, or whatever they call it, they're having exactly that effect. They're expecting to arrive back in port in, I don't know, two weeks, and then they end up arriving back in port ten, in ten days, early. So you go, huh. oh, go on. Just saying, huh. Continue, sorry. I'm vague because this was literally the first thing I looked into. I've mentioned it, I'm mentioning it more and more recently, but this is what I looked into with Martin, who prior to being Flat Earth British, Mappy Martin was his nickname because that's what his fascination lied in or lay in. But would this, this uh, deviation of expecting arrival times have to do with the, the nonlinear rotation of the, of the sphere of the heavens, basically? Yes. Yes, that's the only inference wow. I can give at this stage because of the distortion that that would leave you with the map and we have got that distortion. Well, as we know they've come from the sky and the distances which are based on arc measurements in the sky transposed down in nautical miles, then there's going to be an issue if the stars are distorted to those extremities. Well, the map's distorted and it's using the stars. So what other conclusion can you draw, Arwin? Well, that you can only create a projection that doesn't have a, a linear division, basically. Right, but when you're dealing That's with distances, right? Once, once it was all mapped right? correctly, the squares will be non-linear in relation to each other because of the, well, the non-linear rotation of the of the sphere of the heavens. Exactly, Owen. Right. So it's not a map, is it? It's actually a graphical representation of how you measure the stars. Precisely. Yeah. Well, did you know that? Before two weeks ago, I didn't. Well, I did have the clues. I just, I'd never really uh, put a, put it into a concise framework. But exactly. yes, I did know about the deviation of the rotation of the of the sphere of the heavens for a long time. But right, I never but, really knew what to do with it. Right, but until now, what what this sextant argument has done, beautiful as it is is eliminated the need to debate it and leaving us with more time to consider and ponder these things that you, as you put it, you've got all the clues, you've got all the data, you've just never considered it. Well, then suddenly you go, hang on a second, if this is how it's working with the time and position of the stars over the GP on the land, well, that's number one. <laughs> how they did this is, is, I don't know if you agree, Adam, as a mathematician, but it's truly amazing. Would you not agree? Yeah, um, I, I don't know how they did it. It's just mind-blowing. Um, that's what we're trying to <laughs> at least have a little bit more of a clue. I don't know if we get there. But well, is... they must have used some kind of mathematical pattern in order it's to smart. get that, get it also consistent, it, right? It's how you then transpose that into the ephemeris to, to transpose it to reality. The, the, the way in which it's been done, and I don't know, it's just mind-boggling is is the right phrase at the moment but or, or inspiring i yeah, mean prior to this 
seeing the yeah. flaws between the actual reality of navigation on the flat plane we dwell atop versus what I previously described as the awe-inspiring description of the heliocentric model. This, by comparison, is far, far more amazing because of its function. When you actually look at the heliocentric model in terms of what it provides, other than a bit of nihilism for the people who buy into it, what, what's it doing other than keeping you under control and stopping you having a look and giving you a, 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 an ever-increasing circular path that never takes you anywhere if you consider going anywhere? Other than the well, control aspects, it doesn't really offer you any. It's not useful. It's, but it's a big story medium, of course, also. Well, it's a you kind know, of... It, it kind of works with some of the motions of the stars, like geocentrism. It also has its faults and flaws. So other than that, it's not that much use. When you, come to, when you look at this, and you take into consideration some of the limitations that they might have had voiced upon them, if it was to be true that, you know, you've got to make England look bigger than it really is compared to... If that was true... You, that adds an extra layer of awe-inspiring complexity to it that I just don't think would be part of the the mechanism to produce this map. I just don't see it. I don't know if you agree, Adam. I'm, can, when I just discount that crap that they, they tell us about distorting the maps for the reasons they give us when they compare Gold Peters with Makata, you just think I should chuck all that out, don't you reckon? That's part of the illusion, is it? I mean, Bob showed that. And that's part of the get that out of your head, even though I said it would interest Darwin the way it worked on, on, on that projection. But you see what it is. It is a projection. It's a projection of a ball. And a ball is a projection um, of the stars, the way in which... See, you get your longitude and latitude. Where are you getting those lines from? Where are you applying it? You're doing it all up there. And then the first thing you do is stick that straight onto the ground. And try and make it the reality, but it's not all your measurements up there, right? So it is basically the ball of stars with the correlating coordinates of the earthly locations projected onto it. Yes, and then but, basically but, then but, pretending like it's the opposite. Yeah, what? Well, no, forget about the transposition to sphere from that point, but. With the issue of the distance, that's the nautical miles as, as, uh, assignment to the land beneath, when there is clearly a distortion. Otherwise, the map would be right. And it isn't. It's distorted. But it still right. functions correctly. Therefore, you can only assume the distances are being distorted because the stars that are above the positions are distorted. So what, that's the only conclusion I can draw. Might be wrong. But it seems to make sense when that's actually how they appear and we do have, you know, the refraction experience below, what is it, 10, 15 degrees, 10th, something like that. Well, let, let me summarize it quickly. Yes. Right? The territory projected onto the globe of the heavens model is not the scale. We, yeah, we know that for a fact. That's just stating the fact that Mercator isn't correct scale-wise, which we knew anyway. Right, the only thing that is the skill is the stars, basically. But its relation to the Earth is not linear because of the rotation non-linearity of the, of the sphere of the heavens in relation yeah. to the Earth. Maybe. Maybe. We don't know. Maybe. Well, this is where all my energies and efforts are not directed towards, is what you guys are talking about. So... Everything else has been done, and we're going to figure out this mystery, hopefully, before right. I get too old. Figuring out how they back engineered the stars onto that projection so it functions in the, the way that it does. And there may be flaws in it. We don't know. We're saying it works perfectly, and it has because people have got around. But by the same token, there's plenty of accounts of people not getting around and getting lost. Now, you could describe that to uh, incorrect maps. Areas that don't quite match, that lead people to go in the incorrect direction, magnetic declination. You could blame it on all different things. In other words, you don't know that it's 100% accurate either. But it, at least at surface level and for a pretty long period of time, it's been functioning without any real incident, without anybody complaining, right, 10th? There's nobody saying, no, this doesn't function. It leads you out into blah, blah, blah land if you try and do it the way it's designed. So, you know, having a good grasp of how that functions and how it's been back engineered from the stars may give us a, an idea how to move forward to do it without utilization of distorted star movements 
to give you GP positions and just actually plot out where the land is. I said, does anybody care? I do. I do. I thought you were asking. <laughs> well, that's what's got my interest perked up because, you know, the whole uh, evolution of the argument is now at a full stop because we're trying to figure out this next missing piece. And there is what the ancients knew that we got to figure out how they did it. And so that's the research is how did they do it back then when all the instruments they ever had, they thought was working over a flat plane. So as they sighted the stars to navigate, Polynesians did it, the Vikings did it with the sunstone, uh, the uh, instruments that were made before the heliocentric model was even adopted were working on a flat plane, as everyone thought in the, when they were sailing, they were in the flat world or irregular plane, whichever you want to describe it, because there's hills and valleys. So it was working then before anyone thought it was a globe. It's working now when people think it's a globe, and we just figured out with the sex and what's going on. Now we got to figure out that backward engineering stuff, which is going to be a fun journey. Probably be calling Adam a lot on the math things, but uh, that's why he's here. With that, I'm going to say another huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making today's after show possible. Of course, a massive thank you to all of you in either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley programming streams. Hopefully, smashing the super chat. Liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, hitting the PayPal link, and all that good stuff. Also below this video, you can get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy. And this is of particular note if you drive an electric vehicle. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I will see you all in the next video.